Thanks for watching one of our Be a Goalie instructional videos. We've created this video to give you as much help as possible now that you've decided to start playing goalie, so we hope you find it helpful. In this video, we'll show you how to put on a full complete set of goalie gear. Undergarments are essential to provide a clean layer of protection between the skin and the equipment. Due to the fact that goalies will be wearing equipment that comes into contact with most of their body, we recommend that young goalies wear long pants, long sleeve shirts, and long socks to ensure that the skin is completely covered. Parents may also want to consider purchasing garments that have moisture wicking properties as these will keep the goalie cooler and more comfortable during long games or practices. The jock strap for males and the jill for females are fitted according to the goalie's waist size. It should fit snugly against the goalie's body but not so tightly that it becomes uncomfortable. We recommend that goalies get into a goalie specific jock as soon as the need and budget allows as these will offer a much greater level of protection when compared to a traditional player cup. Once the goalie has put on the goal jock or goal jill, the next step is to put on some knee and thigh protectors. With today's emphasis on the butterfly style of play, it is essential that today's goalies wear separate knee and thigh guards. These pads provide an extra layer of protection between the bottom of the goalie's pants and the goalie's kneecap as the goalie drops to his or her knees when making a butterfly save. These pads come in one of two separate types. Separate detached knee and thigh guards offer the best combination of protection, mobility, and net coverage. These pads come with anywhere from two to four adjustable straps, and they are typically designed to fit the left and right leg specifically. Be sure to check each pad before putting it on to make sure that it goes on the correct leg. When putting the knee and thigh guards on, tighten the strap so that they fit snugly around the goalie's leg yet not so tight as to limit circulation or mobility. Snug fitting straps will keep these pads from falling down the goalie's leg during play. Another option for protecting the goalie's knee and thigh is to use the existing guards that come with today's leg pads. These pads offer a good level of protection and since they don't cover the sides of the goalie's knee, they have the added benefit of creating a little more space in the goalie's knee cradle for less restricted movement. To attach these types of thigh protectors, simply put the leg pad on as usual, Tuck the thigh guard underneath the leg channel of the pants and attach the Velcro strap. Make sure that the strap fits snugly enough so that the pad will stay close to the goalie's leg during play. Next, slide the pants on over the goalie's waist. A pair of properly fit goal pants should cover the lower back, kidneys, and the lower belly. The pant legs should end just slightly above the goalie's knee. Pants are worn in conjunction with the goalie's chest and arm protector so the way that the chest and arm pad is worn will determine how the goalie secures his or her pants. Goalies who wear the belly pad of their chest protector over the top of their pants can tighten the pants using the exterior nylon webbing belt or the interior belt if the pants have one. Goalies who tuck the belly pad of their chest protectors into their pants will need to use suspenders to keep the pants up. These suspenders should be put on over the top of the chest guard. Next, have the goalie put on his or her skates. How tight the goalie gets them is a matter of personal preference, but over tightening to the point of cutting off foot circulation should be avoided. A good rule of thumb is to get the skates snug over the forefoot and slightly tighter over the ankles. This guideline provides the goalie with a comfortable fit and adequate foot and ankle support. Once the skates are tightened, it's time to put on the goalie's leg pad. Pads are put on from the bottom strap to the top strap so we'll start by attaching the toe ties to the front of the goalie skate. The first step is to make sure that the goalie ties a knot in the laces approximately one inch from the toe bridge or the boot of the pad. You will only need to do this one time and you'll keep the knot in place throughout the life of the laces. Next, bring the toe of the skate up to the knot in the laces, then cross the laces through the first hole in the goalie cowling. Then, cross the laces in the other direction back through the last hole of the cowling. Finally, finish by tying a double knot at the top of the skate to keep the laces from coming undone. Leg pads should be attached from the bottom up. After attaching the toe ties, the goalie will then attach the boot strap, then the calf straps, and then finish with the knee lock and thigh straps. The boot strap should be run through the back hole of the skate cowling, keeping the strap approximately one to two inches outside of snug. If the pad has an elastic and Velcro calf wrap strap that runs between the pads on the outside of the goalie's calf, attach this to be somewhat snug but not overly tight. 
Then, attach the calf straps from the top of the boot to the bottom of the knee, approximately two to three inches outside of snug. Next, attach the knee and or thigh straps. Start by attaching the elastic and Velcro knee lock strap that spans the pad on either side of the knee. This strap should be worn snug at first until the goalie develops a personal preference here. Once the knee lock strap is secure, attach the remaining knee and thigh straps. These can be worn the most loose of all the straps and we recommend attaching them anywhere from 3 to 5 inches outside of snug as a starting point. If the pads come with attached knee and thigh protectors, tighten the straps around the thigh to be snug and tuck the pad underneath your pant leg. Before putting on the chest and arm protector, the neck and clavicle protector is secured. This pad is made of HD foams and plastics and provides necessary impact protection to the clavicle and lower neck. It should be worn as closely to the neck as possible, so the goalie should attach the Velcro strap as snugly as he or she can feel comfortable. Once the neck and clavicle protector is secured, the goalie then puts on a chest and arm protector. Once the pad has been placed on the goalie's body, the elastic strap at the rear and sides of the unit is attached. At first, this strap should be worn snugly but not overly tight until the goalie develops his or her own personal preferences. After the body padding is secured, the goalie then puts his or her arm through the arm padding and secures the straps at the base of the wrist. Once again, these straps should be worn snugly to keep the arm padding in place, but they should not be overly tight. There are two ways in which a chest and arm protector can be worn. The belly pad can either be tucked inside the goalie's pants or can be left outside the goalie's pants. Each method has its benefits and shortfalls, so let's go over each one. Goalies who tuck their chest and arm belly padding into their pants will need to use pant suspenders to do so. The suspenders allow the pants to be worn very loosely at the waist so that they have room for the belly pad to fit inside. This method keeps the belly padding close to the body and the suspenders keep the padding from riding up towards the goalie's neck when he or she goes down into the butterfly. Goalies who prefer this method tend to lose a bit of mobility at the waist, but loose fitting pants can often compensate for this. We recommend that goalies use this tuck method when first starting out and then adjust if necessary as the goalie gains more experience and confidence. Goalies who wear their belly padding outside of the pants will keep the pants up using the interior or exterior nylon webbing belts that come with the pants themselves. One advantage of this method is that it allows the chest and arm padding to sit taller on the shoulders when going down on the butterfly, which in turn covers more net. Another advantage is that it allows for more mobility at the waist. A disadvantage of this method is that the belly padding has more freedom to shift at times, which can sometimes leave the sides of the body exposed during certain movements. Once the chest guard and jersey are secure, the goalie is free to attach the mask with a clear Lexan throat protector attached. Make sure that all of the straps are properly tightened and secured, including a chin strap if the mask comes with this option. Make sure that the top of the face opening rests just above the eyebrows and the chin rests securely in the chin cup of the mask. The gloves are the last thing that a goalie puts on. Due to the fact that the catch glove has multiple straps to attach over the goalie's hand, it's a good idea to put this glove on first before putting the goalie blocker on. Once again, thanks for watching one of our Be a Goalie instructional videos. If you'd like a lot more information, including much more detailed buying guides and fitting guides, Make sure to click the fitting guides link at the bottom of the TotalGoalie.com page. Good luck!